Moving on to another standard of care practice that we have been utilizing based off of Keynote 522 in triple negative breast cancer settings. Similar has been seen in lung cancer space where we have been utilizing perioperative uh, immunotherapy. And recently at ESMO 2024 at presidential debate, Dr. Powell's presented Niagara study, which is with Duralma perioperative and bladder setting. At ESMO 2024, focusing on Keynote 522, we did see overall survival results. Before we discuss, it is important to acknowledge that this regimen is generally toxic. Paolo, there are different ways to administer this. How do you go about administering? I know AC can be given first or even carboplatin weekly versus three weeks. How do you go about administering this regimen? So, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with everything that you said, meaning that, you know, the Keynote 522, we tend to call it this way just because there's so many drugs in it that if you want to call all of them, it, it takes a long time. You know, this includes four chemotherapy drugs plus an immunotherapy drug. And it's an intense regimen. And whenever you start this regimen, you may expect, you should expect side effects. Also, some we, we saw some real-world data showing that hospitalizations are not too infrequent in this case. But after showing the benefit of this regimen, we just know how important it is and how it can really save lives. And so it's important to administer it in, in the right way. And there is no single right way because there is, for instance, uh, the, as you mentioned, the sequencing. You can decide to start with anthracyclines or carboplatin paclitaxel. Usually I start with carboplatin paclitaxel, like in the study. And also you can decide, decide if to administer the anthracyclines in a dose-dense fashion or non-dose-dense fashion. In the trial, this was not done, the dose dense administration, but we know that there is trials, there is large meta analysis suggesting a benefit for dose dense. So I think either are reasonable. At Dana Farber, we tend to prefer the dose dense, which creates some difficulties with matching it with the Pembroke infusions, but in the end, all of this still is feasible and, and makes sense. The most important thing to remember is that when you add an immunotherapy drug, especially when you add it upon all of these chemotherapy drugs, you may expect immunotherapy-related side effects. Immune-related side effects, it's important to recognize them and to stop immunotherapy and to give steroids whenever this happens and, of course, stick to the guidelines. But with that said, once again, we realize of how important this regimen is, and not only in patients with not positive triple negative disease, but we even saw data dissected for patients with T2 and 0 triple negative breast cancer, there is a large population and there was a major benefit in that population. So most of the patients with early stage triple negative breast cancer nowadays qualify for this regimen. And it's important that the, the curve of learning of how to administer it is very important because it, once again, it can save lives. Absolutely. And to be honest, when it comes to immunotherapy as a generalist or community oncologist, this is not just breast cancer. Roy had mentioned, we're seeing this across different disease sites. And Paulo, you mentioned dose dense AC. There are times when I'm using that, I tend to switch my Pembro to every six weeks as well to see if I can line that up uh, right. But coming back to the toxicity, we saw that the rate of discontinuation of this combination, even in the trial, was close to 20 to 25 percent. So in the real world analysis, if anything, it's a little higher, not less than that. But the reason for us to give this toxic, tough regimen, Paulo, you touched on it, is because it is saving lives. Initially, we were seeing increased pathological complete response, but thankfully, this has translated in an overall survival benefit. So, Paulo, what did we see at ESMO 2024 for this study? So, what did we know before ESMO? We knew that the addition of Pembro to neoadjuvant chemo and continuation of Pembro after surgery was associated with a relevant improvement in event-free survival. And that relevant improvement now with longer follow-up, a medium follow-up of 75 months, was further reinforced. What we see is that now we have a 9% delta in event-free survival at five years with a hazard ratio of 0 0.65. And also, most importantly, we saw that there is an improvement in overall survival. There is a delta of 5% in overall survival at five years, which means really we are not only preventing these recurrences, but once again, even improving long-term survival with very similar hazard ratio between event-free survival and overall survival. Basically, we are reducing by one-third risk of recurrence we are reducing by one third the risk of death, which is very striking. And as we had seen previously with event-free survival, then there was this nice dissection of outcomes based on achievement of pathologic complete response or not 
at surgery. And what we saw is that the hazard ratio was quite similar among patients with PSPAT-CR, non-PAT-CR, but we know that patients that achieve pathology complete response a very low risk of recurrence, about 5%, even just with chemotherapy. And so most of the benefit with immunotherapy, we see it in patients with residual disease at surgery. But in truth, we know that we, we, we cannot make, it's very hard to make this prediction ahead before starting neoadjuvant treatment because you never, you're never going to know at that point if the patient is going to respond or not. And so right now I feel that it's still reasonable to utilize chemoimmunotherapy in all of these patients up front, but I do hope in the, that in the future we're going to get better at predicting which patients may just receive chemotherapy and which patients really require the addition of pembrolizumab or immunotherapy in general. And for that, we're really awaiting for more translational biomarker data from Keynote 522. And I do hope that in the future, we're going to see those data in some upcoming Congress. Right. And as you stated, Paolo, that the role of pembrolizumab in adjuvant setting with when you actually receive PAT-CR is questionable. Yes, we are utilizing it, but we will find out how the trials play out in near future.